Following up on the introduction of Project Rushmore, Harley-Davidson's new touring model lineup, the Motor Company on November 4th, 2013, revealed two totally new motorcycles, the Harley-Davidson Street 750 and Street 500. Both motorcycles were designed for the new generation of global riders and feature the all-new Revolution X V-Twin engine. This is an authentic Harley-Davidson built for the urban environment. The new Harley-Davidson Street 750 and 500 motorcycles are real steel. They deliver what is demanded in an urban environment. The street brings personal freedom with an attitude, edge, and soul to the world's modern cities. In this program, we will introduce you to the service procedures that are new to the street or performed differently on these new models. The Street 750 and 500 motorcycles feature an all-new Revolution X engine. The liquid-cooled Revolution X engines are designed to meet the demands of stop-and-go traffic while delivering instant throttle response to escape the gridlock of urban environments. PHD 184 will focus on the new Revolution X powertrain to familiarize you with the design and its features. The pre-delivery and setup procedures on the street models are similar to other models and presented in the instructions for each market. Setup for Rider Academy bikes will be covered at the end of this program. The scheduled maintenance needs of the street models are similar to other Harley-Davidson models. The service tasks are organized on the service interval table in an efficient order for completion. Not only does the street motorcycle convey a new clean and contemporary look, so does the service manual. Take some time and review the About This Manual section in the service manual forward for details on the new manual layout and navigation tips. Here is a typical manual page covering the cylinder head. Each section starts with a Prepare topic heading. The purpose of the prepare topic is to provide an outline of those procedures required before beginning a specific task. The numeric steps provide the experienced technician with high-level information needed to complete the procedure. Links to additional information are provided to aid you in performing a step you may not be familiar with. The remove and install topics provide information to the technician to only remove and install the component, which may be all that is required. The alpha steps provide the technician with step-by-step -step instructions to perform the procedure. If a component can be repaired, the disassemble, clean inspect, and assemble topics provide the additional details and steps. Symbols are used in some graphics to provide information about parts. On the cylinder head graphic, you can see the symbol for applying lubricant to the cylinder head bolt heads, threads, and washers. This information is also included in the install text. This graphic also includes the symbol that indicates a part that must be replaced with a new part during installation. These are the symbols that are used throughout the manual. Apply lubricant. The specific lubricant to use will be listed in the text. Discard, do not reuse, indicates a part that must be replaced with a new part during installation. Apply sealant, indicates a part must be installed with a thread locker or sealant. The specific product will be listed in the install topic text. Special tool indicates that a special tool is recommended. The Harley-Davidson tool number will be listed in a call-out table in either the remove or install topic, as well as in the text in the corresponding step for its use. Measure indicates a part that must be measured or gauged to verify that it is within specification. The specification will be listed in a call-out table in the text topics or a link will be available to direct you to the specification table in the front of the chapter. The complete topic provides a list of procedures that need to be performed to return the vehicle to ride-ready condition. If additional removal procedures need to be performed, move to the next section without performing the complete topic in the current section. In this section of the program, we will introduce you to the various service requirements and procedures on the street. The steps shown will only be select highlights, not every step in the full service procedure. Always refer to the latest service information for the model and year of the motorcycle that you are servicing for complete information. The first task we will demonstrate is the removal of the battery. 
With the seat removed, you can pull out and remove the right side cover to expose the electrical panel. Next, remove the main fuse and disconnect the vapor valve from the electrical panel mount. The two retention screws can now be removed and the front of the panel can be pulled out. The panel is then rotated and pulled out of the way. The wiring remains attached to the panel. From the left side of the bike, the negative battery cable must be disconnected from the ground stud on the frame. Loosen or remove the output sprocket cover to access the stud. Finally, the positive battery cable is removed from the terminal. The battery and negative cable are then removed out the right side. To install the battery, the process is reversed. The first service item on the street maintenance schedule is to replace the engine oil and filter. The street uses 3.1 liters or 3.3 quarts of Harley-Davidson 20W50 oil to lubricate both the engine and transmission. The lubricant can be drained from the single drain bolt under the engine. The hex plug highlighted here should not be removed. The oil filter is located on the front of the engine. For access, the radiator shroud is removed. With the two lower bolts removed, the shroud can be lifted off the top tab. A new oil filter wrench has been introduced to fit the street oil filter. Using the wrench, remove the oil filter from the engine, then inspect and clean the gasket surface area on the engine case. Hand tighten the new oil filter one half to three quarters of a turn after the gasket initially makes contact with the engine case. Install the drain bolt using a new seal. Tighten the bolt to specified torque. Add fresh Harley-Davidson engine oil until the level reaches the X area on the dipstick when the dipstick is tightened. This is usually only two-thirds the full capacity of 3.3 quarts or 3.1 liters. Final oil level will be set after the engine is warmed up using the hot oil level check procedure. Inspect and clean the radiator surface at this time and then reinstall the radiator shroud. After the engine is started and warmed to operating temperature, check for any signs of leakage and set the final level using the hot oil check procedure prior to delivery to the customer. Never overfill the system as oil carryover may occur. The next service area we will cover is the brake system. Both street models use dual piston floating calipers on the front and rear. In addition to brake pad and disc inspections, the street models will require that the caliper mounting pins be inspected and lubricated at each scheduled service interval. After inspecting the condition of the brake lines, you can begin to service the front caliper. Begin by loosening the pad retention pin on the caliper from the right side of the bike. Next, the caliper mounting bolts can be removed and the caliper can be slid off the brake disc. The caliper pin can now be removed and the pads removed. To prevent contamination of the brakes by the lubricant, only use Harley-Davidson Dow Corning Molly 44 brake pin lubricant. Begin by removing the caliper body from the mount. Next, apply an even coating of lubricant to each pin. Finish the service inspection by measuring the brake pads and the pad retention pin. Refer to the service manual for specifications. The pad spring in the caliper body is positioned at the pin end as shown here. During assembly, all brake mounting bolts must be torqued to specifications. The same basic lubrication and inspection procedure will be performed on the rear brake caliper. The brake fluid levels can be inspected using the sight glass on the reservoir on both brake master cylinders. The brake fluid is to be replaced every two years. In climates with higher humidity, use the Harley-Davidson brake fluid inspection tool to test the condition of the brake fluid to determine if replacement is needed more frequently. The display lights on the tool will indicate if replacement is needed. The next service area will be the front forks and steering system. There are three scheduled service items. 
The adjustment of the steering head bearings is performed at the initial 1600 km or 1000 mile service. Adjustment and bearing lubrication are required every 32,000 km or 20,000 miles. At 80,000 km or 50,000 miles, the front forks are scheduled for rebuilding and new fork oil. The first task we will demonstrate is the procedure for lubricating the steering head bearings. To prepare for this service, you will need to loosen the adjuster on the clutch cable and remove the cable from the lower bracket to increase the cable slack. Moving up to the handlebar, align the slot in the cable adjuster so that the cable can be slid through. Then remove it from the hand lever. Remove the two bolts at the upper bracket behind the fairing. Then pull out at the bottom to release the posts from the grommets. To free the clutch cable, slide the turn signal down the fork tube. Then push the cable through the bracket opening and position the cable so that it will not influence the front fork movement. Position the bike on a fat jack and block the front wheel to prevent it from moving forward. Also, remove the two rubber plugs from the top of the fork tubes. Next, loosen the three upper pinch bolts on the upper fork bracket. Now remove the fork stem bolt and the center washer. Protect the headlight shell with a soft cloth. Then lift the upper bracket and handlebar assembly up and off the fork tubes. Move the assembly forward and secure it with an elastic cord. Slowly raise the front of the bike while stabilizing the fork assembly until the lower bearing race is exposed under the frame. Inspect the bearing and race while packing the bearing with fresh grease. To prevent leakage, do not use an excessive amount of grease. Next. Lower the bike while guiding the fork assembly until the lower bearing is seated back into the frame. The upper bearing can now be removed for lubrication. Pack the upper bearing with special purpose grease. Install the serviced upper bearing into the frame along with a new grease seal. Lift the upper bracket assembly into position and lower it back onto the fork tubes. Rock the assembly until the top of the fork tube is even with the top surface of the upper bracket. Next, install the stem and washer bolt. Torque the bolt to the initial specification. Then, loosen the bolt 90 degrees. Retighten the stem nut to the final lower torque specification. The final bearing adjustment is determined by measuring the fall away. The procedure begins with the bike raised and leveled. Tape a long piece of cardboard across the fender so that it is even with the tip of the fender. Rotate the forks side to side several times. Then, tap the wheel to the side and mark the point at which the wheel falls away to the side. Repeat the marking in the opposite direction. Then measure the distance between the two marks on the tape. Compare your measurements to the specification. If the measured distance is less than the minimum, the bearings are too loose and the stem bolt needs to be tightened. If your measurement is larger, then the bearings are too tight and the stem bolt should be loosened. To make the adjustment, loosen the two lower fork bracket pinch bolts and the pinch bolt for the steering stem bolt. Loosen or tighten the bolt as required, and then check the fall away measurement. When the adjustment is within specification, tighten the three pinch bolts to proper torque. Final assembly continues with the connection of the clutch cable. Begin by routing the clutch cable through the fairing bracket. Next, connect the cable to the lower cover lever, and then to the hand lever and bracket. When adjusting the clutch, the lower adjuster is used to remove the majority of free play in the cable. The final adjustment is made by measuring free play at the upper adjuster. Make the final adjustment with the upper adjuster. Finally, check the routing of both the throttle cables and brake line when installing the fairing. 
Servicing the front forks is a high mileage service task. The street model uses fork gaiters to protect the finish on the fork tubes from damage caused by road debris and insects. This extends the life of the fork seals. To service the forks, they must be removed from the bike. After removing the front wheel, fender, and brake caliper, loosen the upper and lower pinch bolts and turn signal mount and slide the forks down for removal. Mount the fork in the holding fixture and remove the top plug. The O-ring at the top of the fork must be replaced during this service. The fork tube can now be inverted and the oil pumped out. The fork can now be disassembled for inspection. Inspect the bushings and fork tube for wear. Replace any worn components and reassemble using new parts as indicated in the service manual. To refill the fork, mount the fork tube upright. While fully compressed, add 414 milliliters or 14 ounces of Harley-Davidson Type E fork oil to the fork. Set the oil level gauge to 160 millimeters or 6.3 inches. Use the tool to remove excess oil and establish the correct oil level in the fork. When installing the fork tube back on the bike, Install the tube so that the top edge is even with the top of the fork bracket. The fork bracket pinch bolts can now be tightened to specification and the fender, wheel, and brake calipers can be reinstalled. Cooling system service is next on the schedule. The cooling system is visually inspected for leaks or damage and the coolant level is checked at every service. The radiator fins are cleaned and the coolant is tested for its freezing point or concentration at every service. Replacement of the coolant is required every 48,000 kilometers or 30,000 miles. Coolant service begins by raising the rear of the fuel tank. Use a block of wood to hold the tank up. The coolant drain screw is located on the bottom of the pump cover and can be accessed with a long, ball-end hex tool as shown here. By leaving the cap installed, the overflow tank and the system will drain fully. When the system is drained, the cap can be removed. Install the drain bolt and sealing washer and tighten to specification. Slowly fill the cooling system with new Harley-Davidson Extended Life coolant. Use a flexible funnel and an absorbent rag to collect overflow and protect the painted surfaces. The system capacity is 1.3 liters or 1.4 quarts. Install the cap and fill the overflow tank to the cold fill line. The Revolution X engine in the street is a 60 degree V-twin. A single overhead cam is used in each cylinder to operate the four valves using rocker arms. Screw and lock nut style adjusters are used to set the clearance between the rocker arms and valve tips. The clearance, or lash, is inspected and adjusted at 24,000 km or 15,000 mile intervals. For safety, the procedure begins by removing the ground cable from the frame stud. Remove the seat and fuel tank bolt. Slide the tank back and lift it up. Install a wood brace between the frame and tank to hold the tank up. Raise the front of the tank as much as possible to increase your working clearance. Pull the spark plug leads off the spark plugs, then use an 8mm box ratchet wrench to loosen and remove the valve cover fasteners. On the right side we will remove the air cleaner assembly. The street uses a non-serviceable paper filter element that can be inspected for replacement at this time. With the filter plate removed, remove the four fasteners attaching the backing plate to the engine. During removal, the breather hose on the back is disconnected. With the air cleaner assembly removed, place a protective cloth on top of the valve cover and then remove the cover. During removal, the cover must be lifted up to allow it to clear the cam components. The rear cover is also removed in the same way as the front. 
remove the breather hoses from the covers during removal. The spark plugs can now be removed. If the area is contaminated, clean the debris away before removing the spark plug. Secure the bike to the lift and then use a jack to raise the rear of the bike until the wheel is free to turn. Now with the transmission in six gear, rotate the rear wheel in the normal direction of travel. As the engine rotates, observe the timing marks on the camshaft sprocket. Rotate the engine until the arrow on the sprocket is pointing up and the two lines are parallel to the cylinder head gasket surface. Do not turn the engine backwards during this procedure as it may cause a problem with the cam chain tensioners. Measure and record the clearance for each of the four valves on this cylinder. You can develop a feel when using a thickness gauge by setting a micrometer to a specific size and then feeling the resistance as you use the corresponding gauge size. The clearance range for the 750 and 500 street models are different. The manual lists a minimum and a maximum setting for each set of valves. Valve clearance will normally get tighter as the engine ages. To adjust the valve lash, we will use the special tappet adjusting wrench which combines a 10 mm wrench with a screwdriver. Using the adjusting tool, loosen the lock nut. Use the screwdriver and the appropriate thickness gauge to adjust the screw to set the specified clearance. After setting the clearance, we will tighten the lock nut to specification and then recheck the lash with the thickness gauge. The valve cover gasket and the cover retention bolts are to be replaced with new components. After all of the valves on a cylinder are set, the cover can be reinstalled. Connect the breather hoses during this step. When both front and rear cylinders are completed, the spark plugs can be reinstalled and tightened to correct torque. When reinstalling the backing plate, pay close attention to the lip of the seal. It should fit into the bore and not be pinched or distorted. Connect the breather hose to the back of the plate and install and tighten the four mounting bolts. Install the two fiber washers and then the air filter plate. You can then install the outer cover. The final steps are to attach the fuel tank and seat and reconnect the ground cable to the frame stud. The street models use a 25 mm wide rear drive belt. The rear sprocket has an internal cushion drive similar to the one used on the Harley Davidson Touring models. The last procedure we will cover in this program is the final drive belt replacement. To remove or replace the rear belt, the first step is to remove the muffler. This is needed for access to the exhaust system mounting bracket. Now you can proceed to remove the retaining ring and loosen the rear axle. With the axle loose, loosen the axle adjusters. Then raise the motorcycle and push the wheel forward. Slide the axle out and remove the rear wheel. You may want to remove the lower belt guard to aid in the removal of the belt from the sprocket. Note the position of the spacers during disassembly. While the wheel is removed, you will need to support the rear caliper assembly. Next, loosen and remove the lower shock mounting bolt. The procedure continues with the loosening of the muffler support bracket. Next, remove the pivot shaft nut. With the nut removed, the pivot shaft is pushed in until the spacer can be removed. Next, remove the four bolts and the side belt cover. Remove the belt by rotating the belt sideways as shown here. Do not use excessive force or twisting as you slide the belt through the gap. To install the belt, the procedure is reversed. This concludes the service procedure portion of the program. The street sets new standards for the urban riding experience. Your attention to detail when servicing these new models will build the foundation for growing the Harley-Davidson riding family in the future. The procedures shown in this program were performed on early pre-production motorcycles 
using developmental tools and specifications. Refer to the latest service literature for current specifications and the latest procedures. The Street 500 will be utilized in the new Harley-Davidson Riding Academy. With its confidence-inspiring features, customer-led development, and strong new rider appeal, it's easy to see why the Street 500 motorcycle is a perfect bike for Riding Academy students. To further adapt the Street 500 for this important role, there are some suggested service preparation steps. In addition, a vehicle protection kit is available for range use. To prepare a Street 500 for range use, the power limit calibration needs to be downloaded to the ECM, and the bike should be ridden for 25 miles to break in the clutch, brakes, and other components. Even with a progressive throttle like the one on the Street 500 model, there are times when a student may inadvertently roll on the throttle. Riding Academy coaches and engineers partnered to find a way to limit the power, which in turn limits the speed during training. The result is that the ECM calibration limits top speed in first and second gear. The feature engages very smoothly and most students will not notice. If students continue to hold the throttle wide open, they will sense a slight physical change in the engine. If they roll off the throttle, the engine will return to normal operation. In addition to the speed limit calibration, a vehicle protection kit is available for range use. The kit contains guards for the exhaust, as well as for the chassis components. When installed, the chassis of the bike will not contact the ground at any point. A unique component in the kit is the additional bank angle sensor that mounts on a special bracket. This second sensor is aligned with the front guard that is part of the kit. After installing the kit, you need to verify the function by performing these tests. Start the engine with the transmission in neutral. Lean the vehicle over until the front guard contacts the ground. The engine should stop running within one second after contact. To reset, turn the run switch off for five seconds. Then turn the run switch on and start the engine. Repeat steps for the opposite side. If the engine does not stop, check wiring, connectors, and bank angle sensor bracket mounting to confirm the correct installation. These kit components must be removed and the vehicle returned to its original configuration prior to purchase by a retail customer. This includes flashing the ECM back to original configuration. Retain all removed original components for installation prior to retail delivery of this vehicle. Rider Academy bikes will accumulate mileage differently than normal bikes. While there is not a special service schedule for them, if they are placed in storage between seasons, they should be inspected after removal from storage prior to use. This concludes the PhD program on street service procedures.